So this is section 8.4. This is the final section that we're covering before we have a quiz. We're going to have a quiz, a big quiz. I mean, I, I might even call it a test because it's over four sections, 8.1 all the way to 8.4. Um, 8.1 was just classifying polynomials based on the degree and number of terms, also adding and subtracting them. 8.2 was distributing a monomial into a binomial or a monomial into a polynomial. 8.3 was multiplying uh, polynomials with polynomials using distributive property. And 8.4 is special products. Products means multiplying and special because they don't happen that often, but when they do happen, you guys could notice a certain pattern which will provide you with a shortcut. So let's just go through these uh, certain number of questions and just do them the way we always have until somebody comes up with a shortcut. When I go x times x, what do I get? That's right. How about x times negative 3? Negative 3x. And now when I take the 3 and distribute it 3 times x, what do I get? Positive 3x. And how about positive 3 times negative 3? Negative 9. What happens uh, next? The middle terms cancel out because they're exact opposite values. So our answer is right there, x squared minus 9. Yeah? OK. Uh, number 2. What do I get? x times x? x to the second. x times negative 5? Negative 5x. Uh, positive 5 times x? Positive 5x. Positive 5 times negative 5? Negative 25. What happens with the middle terms? Uh, that's weird. X squared minus 25. So whenever the signs are different, they cancel each other out? Whenever the signs are different, they cancel each other out? That's, that's a great observation. But is that, is that all? I mean, it, it, what, what if I went like this? What if I went um, x plus 2 times x minus 3? Just because the signs are different? They have to be the same exact binomial, right? It, it can't be x plus 2 times x minus 3. It's, it could be x plus 2 uh, times x minus 2. Then the middle terms will cancel out. And that is precisely the observation that I wanted you guys to make. If you guys already saw that, that's great. If you haven't seen it yet, if you keep going, every single middle term is going to cancel out. Okay? So what kind, of a, what kind of shortcut could we say to get from here to here without doing this middle work? Multiply 5 times 5, and we'll get the 25. Multiply 5 with itself, right? And how about multiplying x with itself, and you get the x squared, right? And this sign was a, a minus between them. That sign was a minus between them. So are all of them going to have a minus between them? Let's just do one more to see if it, if it does provide us with the minus between it. When I go y times y, I get y squared. When I go y times 1, I get positive 1y. When I distribute negative 1 times y, that's a negative 1y. And when I go negative 1 times positive 1, that's yeah, going to be a negative 1. So again, the middle terms cancel out. So again, the answer is simply taking your y and squaring it, and then taking this other value and squaring it and putting a minus sign between them. 1 squared is 1, but we're going to put a minus sign between it. So that's your answer, y squared minus 1. So without doing any work, could somebody tell me the answer to number 4 right here? F squared. X, F squared minus? 49. 49. Right? And you guys got it. Awesome. F squared minus 49. If you don't believe me, go ahead and distribute. You're going to see the middle terms cancel out. And you will end up with F, F squared minus 49. What was that? Okay, uh, and we'll get to that in a couple of minutes, yeah? Uh, the question was, what happens they ha if they have the same sign? Then for sure, they're not going to cancel out. Right? You're going to have to actually add the middle terms. Um, let's continue on. How about number five? What, what's the answer to that one going to be? Uh, M squared minus 81, right? 
So this is a shortcut that you don't have to use, but I guarantee you, if you just kept doing it the old way, I mean the long way, m times m, m squared. M times negative nine, negative nine m. Where are always, is it always gonna be negative um, 81 and like negative 49, or can it be positive 49? Um, again, these are called special cases. Special cases, because they don't happen that often, right? But they do, every now and then. And when you do see the exact binomial, but one's a plus and one's a minus, you already know that the middle terms are gonna cancel out. So you could just say, oh, it's gonna be m times m, get m squared, and it's gonna be the last ones, nine times nine, or technically nine times negative nine, that'll be negative 81. It's always gonna be negative x. It's always gonna be a negative uh, between the two. Because when you go the last one, positive nine times negative nine, you're gonna end up with a negative, right? So how about uh, number six? Uh, a squared. A squared, a squared minus b squared. And if you look at any book with regards to special products, this is what they're going to have as a key concept right here. When you have the same exact binomial, but one's plus, one's minus, it's simply taking your first item and squaring it, taking your second item and squaring it and putting a minus sign between it. That's your shortcut, right? So this shortcut applies to any type of binomial that's being multiplied with the same binomial, but with the opposite sign in the middle. So I could say something like this, like, let me make a crazy one up. Um, how about 2x to the third y minus 5, uh, minus 5, we'll just leave it like that, times 2x to the third y plus 5. What's my answer going to be right there just by understanding this shortcut? Four x to the sixth, y to the second, okay, and then minus twenty-five. Ta-da! What? Yep. So you don't have to use a shortcut if you want. Just distribute like we always have been, okay? Now let's go back to the question that you asked. What if you did not have different signs? Okay. What if you did not have different signs? So let me um, let's actually do this one. This is how they're going to ask you, and they will ask you on this section because we're talking about special cases. A plus B squared. This is the type of problem you're going to see. You're going to see a binomial squared. Now, let's understand this. When you have a binomial with the power of 2, you cannot distribute the power of 2. You cannot. If it were a monomial, like let's go back and review back when we did exponents. If you had like... 5x squared y z to the fifth, all to the second power. Yeah, you could put the, the power of 2 on the 5, you could put it on the x, you could put it on the y, you could put it on the z. But that's when there's specifically one term in here. And we don't have one term in there. We have two terms, binomial. So you cannot distribute the power of 2. What you have to do is write this two times. So whenever you see any type of binomial in parentheses to the second power, you're going to have to write it twice, a plus b times a plus b. Now, as you mentioned, what happens when you have the same sign, instead of them being different, like up here, they're the same sign, the middle terms are not going to cancel out. So I wouldn't worry about memorizing a shortcut here. I would just actually work it out and understand that your middle terms do not cancel out. a times a, a squared. a times b, that's a, b. B times A, that's also B A, but I'm going to write it as A B, put a plus sign, and then B times B, that's B squared. So your final answer would be A squared, 1 plus another of those same exact A Bs, right? 1 A B plus another A B, is going to be 2 of those A Bs plus B squared. So this is a, if you look at any textbook, it'll tell you that this is another shortcut, but I don't really even call that a shortcut, right? Like if we had uh, x, x plus 3 squared, the book would say, okay, identify your a term, which is x, your b term, which is 3, and then do a squared, which means you're going to square x, and that'll be the first part of your answer, x squared. Um, and then the middle term is going to be 2 times your a times b. So it's going to be 2 times your x times 3. So if you write that out, 2 times 
your x times 3. And then at the very end, your b squared, which is 3 squared, which is going to be 9, right? So plus 9. So right here, when you look at the inside, x times 3, that's really 3x. And 2 times 3x, that would be 6x. So you'd end up with uh, x squared plus 6x plus 9. I don't really call that a shortcut. I would just write x plus 3 two times, and I would distribute one term, out, term at a time. So that would be yeah, x squared plus 6x plus 9 would be the answer to that one. Let's, let's use what we just learned to do a couple of these uh, homework questions. Now, again, the only worthwhile shortcut that I would apply would be uh, when you have the same exact binomial and one's plus, one's minus. I already know my answer is going to be taking this guy, squaring it, b squared, and then taking this one and squaring it, 36. So my answer is going to be b squared minus 36. But because you guys are barely learning this, why not show your work, okay? Because the more work you show, the more, how, how can I say it? The more, the more work you show, the more clear the shortcut will be, right? Show it, b times b, b squared. b times negative six, negative six b. Positive six times b, positive six b. Positive six times negative six, negative 36. I mean, if you do this, the middle terms cancel out, if you do this, four, five, six times, you're gonna start really understanding that the shortcut is simply taking this one, squaring it, taking this one, squaring it, putting a minus sign between it. Your answer is b squared minus 36. And if you check the back of your worksheet, you should see that answer, a quadratic binomial uh, for number six. Well, let's just jump around here. Now, like I said, when you do not, when you do not have two binomials, one plus one minus in the middle. When you have the same binomial squared, I wouldn't even attempt to do any shortcut. I would just write it out and do my work. So I would write it out n plus nine times n plus nine. The middle terms are not gonna cancel, okay? So n times n is n squared. n times nine is nine n, right? Now. After doing this one a bunch of times, you're going to see that the middle terms, they don't cancel out, but they are the same. So in your head, you're going to start adding 9n plus 9n already and just writing down 18n. I know that might be confusing right now because this is the first one we do, but you're going to kind of create your own shortcuts. So don't try to memorize any shortcuts. Just practice, and the more you practice, you're going to eventually start creating them yourself. So let's distribute positive 9 times n is another positive 9n. Positive 9 times positive 9 is positive 81. So the only difference is uh, on this one, the middle terms do not cancel out. They end up uh, doubling per se, right? 9n doubled is 18n. So my answer is n squared plus 18n plus 81. So again, don't try to memorize any shortcuts. Just do your work and see if you come up with shortcuts naturally. Let's do one with the minus, like number nine. Okay, so what do I do? Distribute, Distribute the, the exponent? No. You're going to write it twice. Okay, uh, do not distribute the exponent because there's a minus sign that's a binomial. You have to actually write this binomial two times. Remember, this is the base. Anything to a second power really means to multiply the base with itself. So let's write it twice. 5w minus 4 times 5w minus 4. That's what 5w minus 4 squared actually means. And now let's distribute 5w times 5w. 25w squared. Okay, and then 5w times negative 4. Negative 20w. Now, at this point, because I'm a math teacher and I've done this so much, once I, once I know the second one, 5 times negative 4, that's negative 20w, I already know that my final answer is going to have a negative 40w. Because you're going to end up with two of the same thing. It's kind of like doubling it. All right? Again, you're, you're going to come up with these shortcuts on your own. So once again, uh, 5w times negative 4, that's negative 20w. And when you distribute the negative 4, negative 4 times 5w, that's another negative 20w. And then negative 4 times negative 4, that's positive 16. And again, the middle terms, they do not cancel. They actually double, right? 
they combine together, so that's negative 40w. So your final answer is 25w squared minus 40w plus 16. Nothing new today. You're doing the same thing as yesterday. The only uh, thing is that once you do so many of them, you're going to come up with your own shortcuts. You should be able to just eventually look at this and be able to say the answer. What's the answer to this one? Anybody? Let's see if anybody has it already. Oh, uh, four, Almost. You got to take it. 16D. Yeah, 16D to the second. Minus 49. Minus 49. Oh. Dang. Got the answer without doing any work. Again, I want you to show your work because the more work you show, the more you're going to develop this shortcut in your head, right? So uh, show your work. You're going to see that the middle terms cancel out. You're going to see that the final answer is 16D minus 49. Um, let's do something like uh, number 30. What do I do with this one? It's a binomial to the second power. What do I do? Yeah. Write it out two times. So 4M to the third minus 2T to the second power. Now, I mean, I'm a math teacher, and I don't even try to do shortcuts here because of these, all these different powers and different variables. I'm just going to write it. Actually, I'm going to write it twice. In other words, I'm not going to put that square. I'm going to write it twice. 4m to the third minus 2t. And I'm going to distribute 4m to the third times 4m to the third. That's 16m to the sixth. 4m to the third times negative 2t. Coefficient times coefficient. What do I get? Negative 8. 4 times 2 is 8. How about m to the third times t? It's exactly that, m to the third times t. Right? And now let's distribute the minus 2t. Minus 2t times 4, m to the third. What's negative 2 times 4? It's also negative 8. And instead of t, m to the third, I'm going to write m to the third t. m to the third t. And last but not least, negative 2t times negative 2t, positive 4t squared. What happens with those middle terms? They combine, and what do I get? Negative 16. It's kind of like doubling it, right? So you end up with 16m to the sixth minus 16m to the third t plus 4t squared. And that's about it. Now, this is the only, uh, again, kind of like last week, we only had two worksheets the entire week before the quiz. Same thing here. This is a second worksheet you re you've received. It's Tuesday. I gave you the first one uh, yesterday, which is Monday. And we're going to have a big quiz on everything. So study last week's quiz, study yesterday's worksheet and this worksheet, and you should be good to go.